So I just posted my review of the Ambernic RG35XX and I spent quite a bit of time in my review showing you guys the user interface, the operating system that this thing does run. And it is a fairly basic, pretty simple operating system. I think a lot of more veteran retro emulator handheld users may be found a little bit less than acceptable in a lot of different ways. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to install something called Garlic OS, which is effectively a custom firmware for this device. And we're going to take a look at it a little bit more closely, talk about what's working, maybe what's not working, and just give a general overview. So before we go any further, this is the stock operating system. I'll actually make myself go away here so you can see everything. And like I said, it's pretty basic, okay? You can see what settings you have access to. There are a few things that are like not translated well, like button sound being open and closed instead of on or off. But the biggest thing is, like I said, that it's just very basic. You're going to be running the game and doing not a whole lot else. There's not a whole lot of options or ways to customize the game. Now, I actually personally think that this is generally okay, and I kind of know why they're going this way. The custom firmware we're going to look at here in a minute is not maybe as graphically inviting, perhaps you could say. This is an interface that your average person, like I could have bought this thing and given it to my little brother, He's not going to get in any trouble. He's going to pretty much understand what he's doing and play the games. This custom firmware, you can dive in and do some stuff and you can really screw some stuff up if you don't know what you're doing. So now let's take a look at what we're talking about with this custom firmware. This was posted on the Patreon for Black Seraph. Now this is currently not behind any sort of a Patreon paywall. That may happen later on, I'm not sure. But this is what this individual has been creating. Garlic OS for Anbernic RG. 35xx. You can see here's some of the change logs, known issues, so forth and so on. And you can see what the uh, home screen is going to look like. So let's just jump right into installing this thing and then we'll talk about it after we're done. So to install, he asks you to install 7-zip, which is just necessary to, uh, to unzip the file that we're about to be using. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see two different things. Copy, paste on top of stock, or the actual SD card image. The simplest thing to do is to click on the copy on top of stock version of this, let that download. The other version is a straight up disk image that I believe, if, if I'm remembering correctly, you would use like something like Win32 Disk Imager to flash onto the SD card. It's a little bit more of a clean slate, whereas this is, as it says, just copying on top of what you already have. And it's very, very quick. So let's go to my downloads folder now. And this is that zip file. So we're going to double click on it, open up 7-zip. Let's move this over. And we're going to extract that just right there in the downloads folder. Should be fine. You'll see this does not take very long at all. We can close this. And now we have these folders. Probably could have extracted into its own folder to make things easier, but whatever. We also have a really basic simple readme. So now what you're going to want to do on your RG35XX is go ahead and power it down. Grab your SD card. I'm using this USB-C dongle to act as my SD card reader. You're going to have to have some way to read the SD card on your computer. Unfortunately, you can't just plug this thing into your computer and, and see the SD card from there. A little bit annoying. This is what you're going to have to do. So once you've done that, you're gonna get all these drives popping up. Okay, so you're gonna to have to pay attention to the miscellaneous and the ROMs. Those are the two that are the most important. Take your Aminate blah, 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 MSD card. Now, this is a good point here. Back it up fully via imaging software of your choice. The simplest one is Win32 Disk Imager. And I'll put a link in the uh, description down below to this. And then once you have this installed, what you're going to do is you're going to point this at your miscellaneous drive, which in my instance would be H. And then you're going to click on this uh, box right there and you're going to, wherever you want this image to be put, you're going to go there and then you can call it, you know, backup or whatever, click on okay. And then you're gonna click on read. And what it's gonna do is it's going to create a disk image of your device. And then if you want to then write it, you just do the th same thing I just did in inverse and then you click write instead of read. And that, as far as I'm aware, should be a good way to back this stuff up. Okay, back to the instructions here. We're gonna copy the files in the miscellaneous folder onto your SD cards, miscellaneous partition and overwrite all existing files. Okay, so we're gonna go in here. We're gonna highlight it all, control C, 
we're going to go into our miscellaneous drive and we're going to hit control V. We can right click, copy and paste, whatever. This is going to pop up. We're going to replace files in the destination. We'll let it overwrite. Let's go back. Let's go back. Copy the files in the ROMs folder onto your SD card's ROM partition. So let's go into the ROMs partition. Let's go into the ROMs folder. And you're going to notice that the vast majority of these are in fact empty folders because these are, I'm assuming, just things that he accidentally pulled over or just didn't take the time to get rid of. The only folder that I think matters is the CFW one. So let's copy that and let's move it over. Again, you're going to overwrite anything that needs to be overwritten. Replace files in the destination. Your number may be different than what mine is because of what I've done in the past. And if you want to just copy all the, all the folders over, be my guest, they're empty. It's not really going to hurt anything. And the last thing you're going to want to do, and I don't think this is actually in the instructions anywhere. I had to kind of just figure this out myself, is this. Whatever emulators you've played where you have save files, you're going to have to move them. So let's go into GBA, and I don't think I've actually got any saves in here because I think I've already moved them. Just imagine this is where your save would have been, right? So you're going to take that save, and I would just copy and paste it over. It's small. You can move it if you want, whatever you want to do. But let's say that's my save file we're going to copy. And we're going to go back. We're going to go into CFW, RetroArch, RetroArch again, saves, and paste them in there. And this should be the same for save files for any emulator. So there's a PlayStation 1 emulator in there now. You can just move them into this folder and it should pick them up and you should be ready to rock and roll. At that point, we're actually done already. So let's grab the SD card, pop it in, and fire it up. And you can see there, that is the new splash screen, Garlic OS. And I'm capturing this just the same as before, and it works totally fine. Let's make me go away so you can see a bit better. This is the user interface. So you have your recents, which you can see. I Believe it or not, let me actually make this clear. What I was doing was not fresh installing it. I was actually updating where I'd already installed it. So that is the install process, and it is the updating process, just to make that very, very clear, because I did not say that. These are my recents. You can favorite things. Things. You can go into individual consoles and pick out games in there like that. And then you can go into the actual RetroArch settings here, which is where you can get into a lot of trouble. And I would advise you that if you don't know what you're doing here with these things, probably don't go in and mess around with them a whole lot. Now from there, there are actual several things that you're going to need to know. So let's stop looking at the capture and look at the device itself. So the first big change you're probably going to notice immediately is with standby. On the stock OS, when you click on that power button, the screen will go off just the same as it does here. Sometimes you gotta press it for a little bit longer. But the difference is before when you would click it, you would come straight back out of standby unless it's been sitting for so long. Because what would happen is, in reality, standby on the old operating system was not really standby. They were just shutting the screen off, but things were still running. You may have noticed that if you let it sit for a while, when you go to power it back up, you'd have to hold the power button and you would see the Anbernic splash screen like we're about to see the Garlic OS splash screen. That's because it would shut off after so long. That quote-unquote standby mode would, in my experience, result in my battery draining very, very quickly. In Garlic OS, there is no true standby mode, and I know that this is going to get a little bit confusing because if you look at this, he actually says that he fixed sleep mode, but it doesn't seem to be an actual sleep mode as far as I'm, I'm able to see. It seems to just be shutting it off, and then when you power it back up, there is one nice feature that I can show you here if we go overhead. Let's jump into a game really quickly. Let's do Pokemon. First thing you're going to notice is it should go right back to where I was, like the exact spot that I was before. And that's how the quote-unquote sleep mode actually does work. You're going to see here, when I hold it down to power it back up, it should show you the Garlic OS splash screen, and then it should go directly back into the game exactly where I was. So I guess that's what they're meaning by a sleep mode. That's kind of the, the, the best thing I can, I can come up with. Now, if you're in a game and you hit this menu button, you're just going to go home. So you're thinking, how do I get into my settings? How do I actually do anything or change these settings? You hold menu and click X, and that gets you into the RetroArch uh, menu where you can do all those things that you either know what you're doing or you don't know what you're doing. Now you can also do your save states in here. So you can change your slot, save state, load state, screenshots, all of these all of these things that you know I think are fairly obvious how they work. And of course you can resume. Now there's other things. Let's hold down menu and hit the volume buttons. And that is going to actually be how we adjust our brightness now. 
You can also hold down menu and hit L1 back here on the back, and we are now in slow motion. Certain games that might be useful, certain games that won't be useful. Let's try menu at R1. We are in fast forward, but as you can see, something's not working because when I unfast forward, uh, I, I just kind of teleport to where I was. So fast forward seems, oh, now it's working. So it may be a little bit buggy. So fast forward is working sometimes and sometimes it's not. See there, it's not working. There, it's not working again. So there's a little bit of weirdness going on there. Early days still. Uh, menu and L2 will load my save state. Menu and R2 will actually save in whatever slot you are in. Now, one thing you have to pay attention to is every time you do save or load, it, it for whatever reason, it changes the slot. I don't know why that's a thing. I guess it's to keep you from overriding stuff, but that's something I have to kind of get used to. On the old operating system, there were thumbnails that showed you where you were and you would just pick which one you wanted to override. I actually kind of like the graphical nature of the old version better, but whatever, you have hotkeys to load and save now. And I think that it's going to be worth you just reading through this change log, known bugs and is issues yourself. Hardware accelerator rendering does not work. There's no working Linux drivers we could use yet. I believe that Black Seraph, who I think I referred to as he earlier, and I don't actually know if that's accurate, if this is a, a he. I apologize if that was incorrect. Um, but this individual, I believe they're waiting on Anbernic to release the source code of the OS that they use to be able to really take things to the next level. I know they do mention fast forward occasionally freezes the screen, toggle it a few times, it will work. So yeah, I will put a link to this, a link to the Win32 disk imager, and I will also put a link down below to the download for the stock OS of this device directly from Amber, and just in case something goes wrong and you want to revert back to that. I think it's really cool that you can have two different SD cards, which is what I'm doing. This is stock, and what's in here is Onion OS, and I can bounce back and forth if I want to do that. I think that's also a pretty cool thing to be able to do. Incredible work by Black Seraph. Massive thanks to them for this work that they're doing. I mean, and they're working very, very quickly. This thing went from first release to like pretty stable very, very quickly. So if you want to see more stuff on this, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe just in case I do continue posting on this stuff. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.